exercise one. In this exercise, using Rhino, we take a look at the functionality and creating a very primitive type of box flashlight, as you can see here. And it will see some of the elements of modeling as well as how to add engraved or embossed text and change colors and add fillets <coughs> and chamfers. So let's begin. Let's start with a new part file inside Rhino. And when it comes up with the part templates, we're going to select the small objects inches and hit open. We can begin on the top plane here, as you can see, if we click in this top viewport window and go with the polyline tool. Count out about 10 of these blocks, that's inches. Actually count out, I should say five actually. And then count two up and click and drag down four. Click across another five from the center. Click, drag it up about two and a half, drag it across, and we're going to vary from the book a little bit on this one. We'll make it uh, one and a half from the center. Click and drag up, click and connect. Now with that profile, we could always change it if we don't like what we have there, delete the lines or whatever. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and go to extrude. So click on this little arrow here and hold down the left mouse button until you find the extrude close planar curve. Click on the curve, hit enter on your keyboard, and then make sure over here you have both sides yes. You could click on that, it'll switch to yes. Cap yes, and delete input no. Uh, actually we can delete it. Let's go ahead and delete the input. That will be the curves because we don't really need that. And then drag this out approximately. Actually you could use this view down below here, the front view or the right. And we want it out a total of four blocks. So two on both sides, and click. And here we have the three-dimensional profile. You just right mouse button click to drag and rotate. If you want to change to shaded, right click on where it says perspective here. And you'll see if you go with shaded, you'll see the shaded input. If you right click, there's also rendered. There's ghosted, so it's transparent. And there's even x-ray which is really, it's like opaque, but where you see the actual lines in the back. And then flat shade. Um, we're going to go with um, shaded action and turn off flat shade. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and build the handle. So using the same tools, go ahead and click on polyline. And somewhere around this area here, you could click and drag on an angled line. Drag it across and we'll just have a little fun here. Drag this down and intersect the boundary. Click and just make a handle section and then connect them. And you can make it however you like, it doesn't really matter here. Once you have that, let's go back to the extrude. You click on this solid, hold down the left mouse button until you find the extrude close planar curve. Click on the curve, hit enter, and drag this out to about a total of two, uh, actually one block, so uh, half a block and a half a block on either end, and click. And here you can see the handles in place. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put some rounds on the handle and on, on the part here, and then we'll merge them. So if you go to solid, up at the top, find fillet edge and put in fillets of 0.5 first of all. And the 0.5 will be, if we, if we go to this view, if you want to maximize this isometric, you just double click with the left mouse button on perspective. If you double click on perspective again, it'll bring you back. So double click on there. Select this edge here, this one, this one, and that one. And now if you right click two times, it will put the fillets in. Let's try that again. Go to solid, fillet edge, fillet, put some on this. And if it asks you here what's happening, is it wants you to select which face or which edge. And you can see the arrows are on the edge that we want here. Click on that, click on that, rotate around with the right mouse button, select that, and that edge under there. And then right click two times. Now let's go to fillet again, solid fillet. Now 
Rhino doesn't like the same size fillet. It just doesn't seem to work very well with filleting. It's not a strong suit. So, for example, if we're going to carry over fillets around these edges, you have to make it smaller than the 0.5. So we could go with actually 0.25. It doesn't have to be quite that much. You could go with actually 0.375. Actually, let's go with 0.375. And I'll select this edge here and click on all the edges that you want to put the fillet on. Try not to miss or skip a, an edge. And do the same over here. If you have to rotate, you can do that too. It takes a little time to get used to how the rotate tool works. And then I'm going to click on these edges as well. Once you have that done, right click two times. Now in this case, the blend was a little bit too big for the geometry given on the handle. And we start seeing surfaces bleed through. In that case, um, that's where it's not, that's not its strength, unfortunately. So let's hit undo. And uh, right up here, click on undo. Let's try that again. We'll put them in separately. Click on this. Click on, uh, actually, I'm sorry, go to solid. Go to fillet edge, fillet, keep it at uh, 0.375 and just get these larger edges here. And then we'll change that to some smaller so it can accommodate the fillet that we're looking for. Or smaller fillet. So right click and now go back to solid fillet and change it to 0.2 select these edges up here. There we go. It's more accommodating now. And now what we're going to do is we're going to merge these two bodies. So over here on the left you'll see this is Union, Boolean Union. Go ahead and select that. Select this model and then select that model. Right click and now merge them together and we could go back to the solid and fillet edge and set the fillet edge to 0.125 and select these edges around this region here. Right click two times, go back to fill it again. If you right mouse button click on the open screen here, it will bring back the commit last command that you used. So you don't always have to go back to the pull down menu to grab that. there we are. Okay, let's put a little more detail on the front here. Let's go to solid, fillet edge, chamfer. And let's, we'll keep it at point 0.1 actually. Type in point 0.1 if you don't have it there. And select these edges on the front of the flashlight. And right click. And there's our chamfer. It's just an angle. Okay, double click on perspective with the left mouse button to bring back the other views. Now we're going to go ahead and put in some text. So go to the text tool, click on that, and I'm going to put in max light. You can put your name in if you like, it doesn't really matter. And then select a different font. And the really scripted fonts don't always work very well, so just be careful of those. But I think I'm going to go with. Um, impact.
There we go. That's nice and bold. And I'm going to leave it italicized. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And just drag it out. Oh, you know what? I, I forgot to. I'm going to hit Escape there. Click on Text again. Maxlight should still should remember that. The height we want here to be one and a half inches. And actually, uh, hit Escape again. Uh, go back there. And the solid thickness should be 0 0.06. Or actually, we'll make it 0 0.03. A little thinner. And now you can drag this onto the top view and center it by eye. Click. And then you'll see it's actually in the center of the model. You don't see it floating out here in space yet. But what you could do is you could zoom up to this right side view and click on that model. Actually, you just select the whole group. Don't just click on it. Do this. Watch this. I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to click out here and drag across, just enveloping the text that's showing up there. You see it highlight. Now you could grab the bottom corner of it and drag it up until you drag it to the top surface. And there it is. And now if you zoom up, you can see it actually looks as though it's embossed. Now at this point, you can try and merge it. It might not always be successful because of the detail, but I'll try. In this case, it did. It worked. Now, for changing colors, basically you could click over here on the little color object properties wheel. And on the right hand side, you see these different options. Uh, let me actually let me close this and try that again. Object properties. Okay, when you click on the model on the right, you'll see there's layer colors and display colors. You could click on this little color swatch here and select from different colors. So if you want it to be a, a magenta or cyan, you could click on that and it will change the that part, that color. Um, if we kept the max light separate, let me hit undo here a couple times until we go back where it's not connected. Let's select that again and drag it up. And if, as long as we don't union it, now we can make the, bat, the, uh, the background here. Let's say I wanted a red flashlight. Or if I could go to other, I could select from a whole array of different colors. Maybe I'll make it a uh, mint green color. And then I could click on the, the max light text and select just that by enveloping it, like just clicking and dragging a fence around it like that. And I could go with that and change that to a different color, like maybe I want it to be white or yellow. And here we can see, now that we've changed some of those colors, if you go and right click on perspective, go to rendered. Oh, and unfortunately the render doesn't pick up the uh, colors from there. But actually, let's, uh, let's go with flat shade. And shaded. All right, and that completes this exercise.